Good morning. My name is Phil Tartaglione, and I represent the portfolio of Brand Italia. Brand Italia is an American importer bringing America wines from Piedmont, the Veneto region, Sicily, and Tuscany. And today I'm here to talk about uh, a couple of the wines that we have just aligned with BNP, our New Jersey and New York distributor. As our crazy luck would have it, we uh, began all of the logistics to be involved with BNP at the end of last year, and we were ready for a kickoff April 1st. Uh, the COVID uh, virus hit mid-March. It derailed all of our original plans, and I did a virtual sales meeting with the sales team of BNP uh, by video conference, uh, Zoom. And today my, my video is designed to be a virtual work with. Normally by now, I probably would have had three or four days of ride with assignments with the various reps in New York and New Jersey, uh, presenting the wines of uh, Brand Italia to the retail trade and the restaurant industry. So let me start off with uh, the, the first brand, the main brand is called Ricosa. Ricosa was a distillery located in the Piedmont region, in the Longue region near Alba. In the 1800s, it was a distillery in the center of the town of Prioca. Um, it has evolved into being a winery, and I am presenting Ricosa Gavi. Gavi is a 100% Cortese grapes. The region of Gavi is in the southern zone of Piedmont, closer to the uh, Ligurian Sea. And coincidentally, Gavi goes incredibly well with all sorts of seafood dishes. This wine is a huge step up from a Pinot Grigio. Uh, Pinot Grigios are very light. Some of them are insipid and pretty much uh, bodiless, but this has a uh, good weight, nice acidity, great minerality, and is a terrific accompaniment to, you throw any seafood at this, at this wine and you will have a match made in heaven. The region of uh, Piedmont is known for red wines, and here's one of them, Barbera di Asti. Uh, when I was in Piedmont a couple of years ago, I asked the winemakers of Ricosa um, to give me a summary, their, their elevator sales pitch on the difference between Barbera di Asti and di Alba. And the answer is this, in Alba, um, the number one grape is Nebbiolo. So Barbera plantings take a secondary position of importance in the mind of the wineries. Uh, doesn't mean they make a, a, a inferior wine. It's just the positioning of the vineyards, the slope, and the slope management, etc., uh, is all about Nebbiolo, second for Barbera. But in the Asti region, the two grapes are Moscato and Barbera, and Barbera is the is the number one lead. So it receives the better uh, uh, slope positionings and more attention. That's it in a nutshell. Makes a great wine, nice acidity. Barbera grape is the grape, uh, excuse me, is the wine that the locals drink all the time with pizzas in the, in the cafes and trattorias. It is an easy drinking red wine. It goes delicious with anything with tomato based. It has low tannin, high acid, beautiful fruit, beautiful body. It is absolutely my favorite go-to red wine. We drink it here at my home all the time. That's Ricoso Barbera de Asti. The Ricosa folks uh, in about 2013 began to um, began to talk with a consortium in Piedmont to allow them to make an appassimento. An appassimento style Barbera means it's air dried grapes. So copying on the style, similar style to what happens in the Veneto with Amarone. The grapes are hand harvested, they're brought to warehouses, they're laid out on racks where a ventilation and humidity controlled warehouse allows the grapes to shrivel. Um, they're racked for about six weeks, so it's not a full raisin shrivel, uh, but it's enough to reduce the water content and increase the fruit content and the intensity. Uh, no oak aging at all. It is aged in stainless steel and the bottle for about two years before release. Rocoso was the very first winery to do an appassimento style in Piedmont out of Barbera, and we were the first to bring this to America. This is rich, full-bodied, with a little bit of residual sweetness that you get in. Similar to Amarone, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, glass of wine. Enjoy that one. Ricosa Barbaresco. Now I'm going to talk about 
the queen and the king of wines from the Piedmont. Barbaresco is always called the queen because this style of Nebbiolo is a little bit lighter than Barolo. Uh, for DOCG status, it has to be aged for um, two years. One year must be in the barrel and one year in the bottle. Dry, cherry, great aromatics, nice tannins, and a great life. That's the Barbaresco. And here is Barolo. Rocosa Barolo, 100% Nebbiolo, uh, by law, two years in oak, one year in the bottle before release. This is called the king because it has more body, it's more masculine, it's more uh, intense uh, than the, uh, the queen, the more feminine style of the Barbaresco. Nevertheless, both of these wines are terrific values in the Nebbiolo world and will live a long time in your cellar. That's the Barolo. Now, the Rocosa folks have uh, a second line that's called Trifala. And Trifala is named after the dogs in Alba that search for the truffles, the famous truffles. So uh, we have a screw cap wine here, a cute comic strip story. It's all about this dog here who never found a truffle. And uh, all of his friend dogs would belittle him uh, because of his inability to find truffles. Then one day he blindly fell into a ditch and there was a truffle worth a million dollars. It's a cute story. It's a fun label. Uh, and the wine is real serious. And that's the most important part here. This is one third parts, equal parts of Cortese, the natural white wine grape of Gavi. So it's Cortese, Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc. There is no oak aging at all. This is a beautiful, crisp, mineral-driven wine with nice acidity. It's a great everyday starter, and it's a great wine for your appetizer, seafood, salads, chicken dishes, and light grilled items. And Trifla has a red counterpart. Of course, I drink a lot of it. I didn't have a bottle in my basement. So there's a photo shot of the Trifla red. 80% Barbera, 20% Nebbiolo. Again, no oak. And it's great because it's a real beautiful drink of wine. It makes it terrific by the glass pour, and you can taste the Nebbiolo, which is uh, the nice point of the wine. And the last two items I'm going to talk about today come from the Veneto region. And it's called Integrale. Integrale is 100% uh, organic. It's a pet net wine. So let's show you the white here. This is the Bianco. The grapes are Galera, Garganega, Serpino, and Piniella. Again, as I said, 100% organic certified, no pesticides, no herbicides, and it's unfiltered. So there's a little bottle capsule, just like when making champagne. They cap, they cap it with a, a bottle cap, not a cork and uh, they allow it to rest on the leaves. Because it is unfiltered, as I tilt it, you'll see a puff of the uh, natural sediments that are at the bottom. Pet net category is extremely popular in restaurants and with uh, the wine aficionados and the wine shops throughout the uh, New York, New Jersey region. The Bianco, and here is a Rosé. The exact same style and the exact same uh, talking points, organic, etc. The grapes here are Raboso and Marzinha, also Corbinella, Corbinella, and Torchetta. Um, and again, a little bit of sediment at the bottom, pet net style, bottle cap. So that's a short summary of the wines from Brand Italia. BNP is our exclusive distributor for New Jersey and New York. And I would like to take this time to say thank you for watching this video. And I hope that everyone in your home and all of your associates are healthy and safe and uh, surviving the issues that we have with the virus. Thank you very much and cheers.